So I, um, as, a, as an A-level student, I mean, I knew for, um, from a fairly early age that I loved the sciences, and I decided to do a PhD in my teenage years. And um, I was also a bit of a workaholic, tending to slightly overdo it on uh, too many hours at a desk and so on. My A-level biology teacher, A-levels were what you studied in high school to get you into university, handed me this book by this guy called Richard Dawkins called The Selfish Gene. And so I read that in the late 80s about how we are essentially gene machines and, you know, putting forward this very materialistic view of human beings and the purpose of life. And I just kind of absorbed that. I didn't decide consciously that, that I was going to become an agnostic or an atheist, but I somehow arrived at university in that position. And I had somehow uh, bought into the view that science and God were in conflict, that you couldn't, you couldn't hold both together, you had to choose between them. And so, interestingly, in the very first week at university, there was this event called Gorilla Christian, which was nothing to do with barbecuing. Um, <laughs> I listened to the quest. It was four Christians in a row. You could ask any question. And I listened to their questions uh, and the way they were being answered. And about halfway through this evening, I put my hand up and I asked my question. I said, surely you can't believe in God and be a credible scientist at the same time. And I was given the answer that, yes, you can. Um, essentially, what they said was asking someone to choose between Science and God is a bit like asking someone to choose between the programming languages and processes underlying Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg as the reasons for the existence of Facebook. And of course, you think about that for one millisecond and realize you don't need to choose between those two things. So for me, I'd never heard anything like that before. It opened up a whole horizon for me of asking more questions and grilling more Christians, which I did over the course of the next 18 months. And I got to the point where I didn't have all my questions answered, but I could see that this person, Jesus, was real and authentic, and he offered me a clean start and forgiveness. And he was not only a brilliant uh, philosopher and, and logician, and, uh, but he was also beautiful and pure and um, could be trusted. And so I put my trust in him. I was 20, 1920, halfway through this degree, and I continued to finish it. But, and interestingly, you know, that my newfound relationship with the creator of the natural world did not diminish my study of it. In fact, it blessed it, augmented it. You know, I was not only studying nature and learning these extraordinary mechanisms that could not uh, be here by chance, but also was in relationship with the one behind it.